Hey guys, I'm Frequent in World and just working on PowerDirector 17 doing some editing today and I've had a couple of people request, can I show you a little bit more in depth the program, the layout, uh, what do you get for your $59 uh, PowerDirector 365 subscription? And absolutely guys, we're going to jump on the computer, I've recorded a bit of stuff and I'll show you, I found a couple little things that are a little irritating, um, but overall very impressed with the program, it's running very smooth and uh, we'll get into stability, uh, output stuff, what options do you have for output, and all that stuff. I'll show you right now. Let's get on the computer. Now I mentioned, guys, in the uh, last video, I paid $59 for a 365 PowerDirector package. And you can either buy the package outright, it's $120, or you can pay for the yearly service. If you pay for the yearly service, I'll show you what else you get with the package. And uh, if we just go to, you get something called your application manager, your Cyberlink manager, which shows you all of your Cyberlink products. And so here's my PowerDirector 365. And if I click on add-ons, I'll show you guys, you get access to all of the action packs, holiday packs, all these little extra packages for uh, transitions and effects and things like that. And as you can see, I've only installed a few of them. There's a whole bunch, the blue ones there, I haven't, haven't done yet and if we go back into the program um, here's where they show up so I'll, I'll show you guys under effects tab I have 148 effects installed right now probably would never use even half of them but <laughs> anyway they're there uh, this these are all the rooms that you can go into so um, this is the effects room this here is the video overlay room and I have 88 different um, actions and overlays that I can use um, in this tab and you can download or buy or purchase more of these. The next room here is the particle room. You can see I have 86 particle effects in here that we can overlay and use in different projects. Down here you've got the title room and they actually have a very good title uh, system. Um, once you click into it you can do effects and it, it's fully loaded guys, fully loaded. Here's your transitions you can see I have 170 transitions. So I'm just trying to show you guys what you get for your $59 subscription for the year. I was a little surprised at how mature this program actually is, guys. If we click on a file that's in our timeline, then once you do that, you can click on the designer. You can do picture and picture, masking, action camera stuff. Um, I don't even know what content aware editing is yet. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, fix and enhance. This brings up all your color correction, your white balance, your lens correction, all this stuff. So tons of options here available, guys. You can do keyframing for any of this. Um, I did some blur masks the other night playing around. They worked perfectly. And then if you go to tools, we have power tools where you can do your video speed, crop and zoom, videos in reverse, blending 2D to 3D. You can do all of your, um, your audio uh, effects and dubbing and editing. And if you right click on any file, so those were under designer, fix, enhance, and tools. If you right click on any um, clip, it also brings up all of the other options. You know, for muting your clips and things like that. We're going to talk about stability of this program so far. In 20 hours of use, I have seen it crash once, and it came up saying, sorry, uh, PowerDirector has crashed. Um, and then there was a little box that you had to close the window, but the program never actually closed. I saved my project and I just kept working. So I, it never really did crash and I'm about 20 hours into working with this program. So I have yet to see it crash. I did see that your program has crashed window come up, but the program was still running and working fine. So, and I didn't even restart the program. I just kept working on the project, finished uh, editing it and rendering it and it worked fine. But I did find one other little glitch here I'm going to show you guys. If you take a, a file and you go into your power tools and you change the video speed. And if you speed the file up, so let's speed it up four times. Now I was running two audio uh, files the other day. I was mixing files from the clips in with the background audio that I had. And some of these I wanted to mute and some of them I wanted to keep on. And once I change the, uh, the uh, video speed, I right clicked on it to mute the clip and you can't access that once you've changed the speed. So what you have to do is mute the clip first 
and then speed it up. Just a little tiny glitch that I, I don't even think they're aware of. Just something I thought I would report. The, there are a couple little things that I find annoying, um, but it's just a matter of getting used to it. There's no preview. There is a preview window, but you can't do editing within that window. So if we double click any file, it goes here and it starts previewing and it goes through your clip. If you want to actually do um, a cut to that video, you have to right click and do a pre-cut. It's not a big deal. So this opens up your cutting window. So this is where you can do your, your um, intro and your exit to any clip you want, okay? And it shows you, you can change the position and things on the time. This is cool. When you click OK, watch what happens. It creates the pre-cut and it puts it in its own little folder. So then you can drag your cut that you just made down to your timeline and you go click back up and it brings you back up here. Now what you see down in the bottom right side of that video clip is a folder. And inside that folder is where all of your pre-cuts are. So that's a very good management system, very easy and quick to use. The problem with it is when you scroll down here and you've got 190 clips in here and we go to the bottom and here's one that I've already pre-cut earlier. If we go into that and we drag the pre-cut down to the bottom here and you go up, there's two things that happen. One, it brings you right back to the top. So you got to scroll down and down and down through all 200 of your videos again every time you do that. So that's one annoying thing. The other annoying thing is when you're down here working at the end of your video clip and you got 20 minutes back this way behind you and you're watching the clips, watch what happens when it gets to the end of the movie. So when it's done, it jumps back to the front. So if there's 25 minutes of video here, it goes back to the front and you've got to scroll all the way to the end. Now the fast way to do that is to, I did find there is a shortcut key for that. If you click down here on any of the timelines below and you hit the end uh, button on the keyboard, it takes you back to the end of the movie. But it's an extra step that you've got to do every time you're watching, if you're, do, if you're doing an overlay here, you want to see how it overlaps. And if this plays to the end, it jumps back to the beginning every time, right to the very beginning of your project. So that's a little bit annoying in itself, the fact that uh, you've got to, you know, then click down here and then click the end button on the keyboard to go back. It's a, it's an unnecessary step. Okay, so I should show you guys if we go into pre-cut, um, you can actually go to multi-trim, which I've clicked on, and you can do an in and an out. And then if you move over here, you can do another in and another out. And see, look, over here on the right, it's creating multiple segments. You can also do um, a scene detection where it, it will split it up for you automatically. But once you've got the ones you wanted picked, if you click OK, then in your subfolder, it now has three cuts. So I've drugged everything in here down onto the timeline, and that has made uh, almost 11 minute video. And I want to show you that these files you view the properties, they are 4K files with a bit rate of 72.5. These are recorded off of my new Samsung S9 phone. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is now we've got our movie put together, which I didn't do, I just dropped everything in there. We're gonna go to produce and I just wanna show you guys some of the options that you're gonna have. So here, somebody was telling me that XAVCS is not uh, an export option in most linear editors or non-linear editors? Well, it most definitely is. In the Movie Studio, Vegas Studio, um, Magic's Movie Studio, uh, as well as Power Director. So all it is, XAVCS is a Sony proprietary MP4 wrapper. And um, it's a very nice clean codec that when you record on the new Sony cameras, the A7R3, the A7 II, yada, 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 CX900 camcorders, they are recording in the XAVCS format. So once you select whether you want XAVCS or you can use regular AVC, there are 4K options for both of them. And that's what I want to show you guys is the rendering uh, speeds. So let's talk about my machine here very briefly. I'm running an AMD Ryzen 8 core 1700 machine. It's a year and a half old machine. I've got 16 gigs of uh, DDR4 RAM in there. And I've got a Zotac 1080 um, 
not even a TI card. It's just the, the, the regular 1080. So it's got eight gigabytes of RAM on that. And I'm running SSD hard drives um, in the system. So let's pick, and I recorded these in um, 60p. Um, so the AVC H.264 does not have a 60p option. So that's why I like the XAVCS file. We can come right down here. In Vegas Movie Studio, um, for me to render uh, 60p 4K, we were rendering, with no effects and things like this, uh, a two-minute clip was going to take an hour the other night. A two-minute and fifty, almost three-minute clip was going to take an hour the other night. So let's see how fast this is going to do. Okay, so we've got that uh, XAVCS 60 megabytes at 60p selected. And if we click start down here, it's going to show us. Over here is our guesstimates, okay, guys? Um, so it's going to show us that the file is going to be a 5 gigabyte file, roughly. And it's going to take 21 minutes, roughly, to do an 11 minute video, which is what I reported. Um, I did some testing and on the first video I made, it's a 2 to 1 ratio for 4K. Okay, so let's stop this because that's what it's going to take to render. We're going to finish this and it will be 21 minutes or 20 minutes. It's very accurate and the size will be very accurate as well. I'm not going to sit here for 20 minutes, so we're going to stop this. And I just want to show you guys if we render this as regular... 1920 by 1080 HD and uh, we'll even pick the 60 megabytes 40 okay because that's I do record everything in 60p and I do have been uploading all my movies in 60p to YouTube it just looks a little smoother and if you guys notice I didn't mention earlier I have the hardware video encoder selected these 1080 cards are fantastic so I have not tried the SVRT guys online were saying it's very quick as well but I'm using hardware because I have top of the line hardware. Let's look at how long it's going to render this same 11 minute uh, file. So it's going to render an 11 minute movie in about 8 minutes. That's with a bunch of pictures. Um, there are no effects or or transitions or anything in there. It's just a basic bare bones test of raw data. You will find, guys, that the biggest one is a sharpening filter. If you throw a sharpening filter, it's going to, again, slow you down probably another third. It's going to add a third of whatever your render time is on top of that. But that's still very quick. Some of the programs I was using before, Pinnacle Studio 20, um, it took a two-minute clip. And once I, I threw on a sharpening filter, it went from two and a half minutes or whatever it was rendering time. might even been one-to-one, -one, two minutes and two minutes. It took that and it was going to be a couple of hours, two or three hours, to render that same two minute clip with sharpening. So um, we will do some further tests on that. I just wanted to show you guys. Let's look at some of your options. We'll cancel this. You've got uh, AVI, all the standard stuff for all of these guys, MPEG-2, Windows Media, XAVCS. Um, you know, you can go from 1280 right up to the full 4K, 60 at 60. They actually have H.265 as well. Um, but we're limited to 37 megabits per second there. And I don't know if we can download more options or if there are more options, but I mean, these cover all of the basics. Pretty much everything you need for guys just throwing stuff up on YouTube and whatever else, right? And this is for your JPEGs. You can put them as PNGs or, or JPEG. Um, the size, frames per second. That's if you're doing a slideshow. And then they have, if you're doing audio files, you can you have audio options here as well. WMA, WAVE, and M4A.